On this Debaco University video, why Flower ID is important for cannabis production will be covered. And there also is another video on this channel which will go over exactly how to identify both male and female flowers on cannabis plants. So we see pictured here a nice female flower, but we're gonna go over in this video lecture why fly flower identification is important for cannabis production. So first off, we have those male versus female flowers that we need to be mindful uh, and well-versed in identifying. Because cannabis plants produce distinctive male and female plants, they are a dioecious plant. You have a male plant or you're gonna have a female plant. Female flowers or plants produce the buds where the cannabinoids and terpenes are produced and the plants uh, are considered to be very sought after by growers. Male flowers or plants produce pollen, uh, which is needed for the formation of seed production. Male plants need to be removed from an area of female plants to allow for female flowers to remain unpollinated and produce chemical compounds in the greatest concentration. This is called the sensimilla or seedless harvest. For if we have a male and a female plant together, the female plant will then produce seeds if the pollen from the male plant uh, is received by the female flower here. And these are looking at the pre-flower determinations. And again, there'll be another video going over the details, identifying those both uh, in images as well as in the field. So what if we get feminized seed? And a lot of growers are buying feminized seed and they think this is great, I don't have to worry about male plants. So do you really need to ID plants if you start with feminized seed? Well, without a doubt, I would say yes. Even if the seed is 99% uh, feminized, the seeds are female, it still means one out of 100 will be male or 100 out of 10,000 plants will be male. So depending on how much scale you're growing, that can have a great impact. So in large growing fields, it's very important once uh, as once ma one male plant can produce high amounts of pollen and reduce the productivity of female plants drastically. Now, if you're only growing five, six seeds, you're like a 99% chance, odds are you're gonna have mostly female seeds, but still wise to go through and be able to recognize what a male plant, male flowers look like. So in our large growing areas, our operations, the large uh, plant production facilities, flower identification is very important as one male can contaminate the female plants. I put contaminate in quotes because it's basically just producing pollen, which will cause those females to produce seeds and not cannabinoids. Repeated walking of fields is important to be sure to catch the males as soon as they can visually be identified. There is some time, they don't immediately just produce pollen, there is some time to catch those male flowers before they will produce pollen that will be exposed to the environment and potentially pollinate neighboring female plants. For indoor operations, uh, a one male plant in an indoor operation can quickly spread pollen, especially via ventilation systems, and that's why it should be removed very quickly amongst uh, identification, because it's pretty much a closed environment, can spread that pollen very quickly. Now for clones, ideally with clones, they should all be of known, ideally female gender. However, in some cases, there can be an odd male plant, so knowing the difference is still important. In this case, the producer of the clone should be contacted to inform them that your identification, since it's not what you would be expecting. Buying clones, you're expecting female plants and 100% female plants at that. Good to let the producer know if you did get a rogue male, um, just as good practice because Odds are that might show that might be some confusion in their cloning practices, may have one reverted back, but for the most part, clones, you're expecting to get 100% female plants. 